Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing a video about some of my favourite audiobooks from my childhood. Now this was one that was kind of requested by a subscriber or at least someone who said yes that would be vaguely interesting to watch and um, I used to listen to a lot of audiobooks as a kid. When I was younger my parents were um, divorced and they lived quite far away from each other, it was about a three hour drive so when my dad would come and pick me up to drive to his for the weekend we would often put on audiobooks in the car and these are some of the ones that I must have listened to. I would hazard a guess of like anywhere between between 40 to 50 times each and I have really strong memories of as a child so I wanted to talk about them because I think that they are cracking good books obviously I'm a bit biased and I think the audiobook versions of themselves do really really well. The first one of those is Stick of the Dump by I can't remember most of the authors so there's gonna be lots of pictures going on here. Stick of the Dump is the story of a young boy who he's out playing basically and he finds um, this other kid living in um, like the dump hence the name and he is this sort of slightly Neanderthal type creature and it's about his interactions with Stick and they have um, a whole myriad of different adventures culminating later in the very end which is kind of got a bit of a weird time travel s thing going on linked with Squad of Stonehenge it's very very cool um, I loved this story I think the imagery was so so strong and I vividly remember there's a bit where they talk about making a home for Stick or making his home a bit nicer and they they find all these old bottles of like empty bottles of wine that they then stack up and then use like the clay to kind of cement them together to make a wall but it's a wall where when the sun shines through you've obviously got those gorgeous colours from the different shades of the greens of the bottles of wine and I just remember it so vividly and it just being such a like gorgeous image and I think it's a wonderful story of like childhood and the fact that adults never believe kids like this this kid tells his parents and like various adults around him all the time about Stig and they just think it's an imaginary friend when actually it's this like strange child living in a in a rubbish tip it was excellent excellent book another one that we listen to loads which is one of my dad's all-time favorite books and is an absolute iconic classic is wind in the willows uh, if you don't know what Wind in the Willows is, have you been sleeping under a rock? Like seriously? Um, but basically it's a lovely story of a collection of little animals and it's their, the, the various um, adventures that they get to go on. So there is Ratty and Molly and Toad and Badger and they have a whole variety of different exciting things. Toad is really kind of the main focal point of the storyline where he gets into a lot of mischief. He's rather rich um, but quite silly with it and often gets in trouble and thinks he can just pay his way out of most of the problems. He gets obsessed with things like caravans, motor cars, ends up in jail at one point, there's a whole fight with weasels. Generally it's absolutely excellent and just the writing is so lovely and heartwarming and glorious. My dad and I actually went to see uh, Wind in the Willows put on as a play recently and it was absolutely as wonderful as you could imagine. Another classic that we listen to absolutely loads is Black Beauty by, uh, I believe it's Anne Selwell? This is a story from the point of view of a horse set in the kind of industrial revolution and it is about um, Black Beauty's journeys from a foal all the way through and the different kind of uh, owners that he's had and um, belonged to. It was written actually, I've listened to a couple of podcasts about this book um, sort of just over the years and it was written as a sort of argument against a lot of the animal abuse that these poor workhorses went through um, which y does come through definitely in the story uh, but for me as a kid it was just a lovely story about horses and you know I went horse riding as a kid I think I spent a good three four years horse riding um, I definitely had the horse girl phase shall we say um, com not complete with quite the bangs that Jenna Marbles rocked in her last video but still um, a fairly fairly strong horse girl vibes over here and so Black Beauty really was just a culmination of that. It's a lovely, lovely tale. It's relatively easy to read because again, these most of these were written at for children. Um, so it's definitely one that I would recommend. One that nobody has ever heard of is Clever Polly and the Stupid Wolf. This was a collection of short stories about our wonderful heroine Clever Polly and the wolf that was trying to eat her and the various ways that she manages to outwit the stupid wolf. And this is such a wonderful spin on the classic like Red Riding Hood tale where the wolf is desperate trying to get Polly all the time um, but Polly's just going about a day she, you know she's she's off to school she comes back and she manages to bamboozle the wolf, wolf over and over and over again and there's some really really classic examples of things like the the wolf is sat outside of her window picking off of Daisy saying I get her and I don't get her like you do with like loves me loves me not and he gets to one where it finally says I get her and Polly's like but you don't and the wolf's like no I do you have to listen to the flower come down and let me eat you and she's like but but Wolfie like there's an entire field of daisies here and think of all the different daisies in the entire world to find out if you get me or don't get me you have to pick the petals off of every single daisy and he's like 
shit bro you got you got a point there all right i'll get on that and it's just the, the most like zany quirky ridiculous little stories that really appeal to a child's brain and were so well done and absolutely lovely in audiobook form i remember the narrators putting a hell of a lot of energy into those characters voices and really going for the emotion in them another one that again is far more of a classic is tom's midnight garden which is just a gloriously gorgeous little story i believe it's by philip pierce and this is one where tom um moves into a new old house which the the landlady lives upstairs and she's very scary and there's this clock that strikes I believe it strikes 13 or when it strikes midnight the garden outside changes and he meets this young girl called Hattie who um, it just is never there during the day and there's some kind of sort of time travel aspect going on and it's about the adventures they have in their garden and sort of the commentary on growing up and loneliness and just finding friends in unlikely places and again the imagery of the garden is just so stunningly beautiful and the imagery of the clock is very very strong and there's like a biblical passage in it that i like vividly remember as a kid so yes absolutely stunning and totally worth reading and then the final one that we listened to over and over and over again was the hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, clearly. Um, I never listened to Lord of the Rings as a kid, it was one that we kind of completely skipped over, but I now have listened to it as an adult. But The Hobbit was one that we went through over and over and over again. And again, it's that really classic, iconic audiobook where they, um, J.R.R. Tolkien puts a lot of songs into his books and they were all done very, very well in this particular edition. And The Hobbit is just such a like wacky, quirky, fun, there and back again kind of a tale where it's all exciting adventures and trolls and spiders and dragons and things, which I really think that the movies dragged out way too much and tried to make too much of an epic that was really designed to be much more of a shorter, sweeter, um sillier book than i think the movies ever made it out to be but it's definitely super enjoyable and was one of the favorites that we had on and definitely was one of the longest ones from this list the rest of them are, are much much shorter i'm sure there were more audiobooks that we listened to you know the, the this spans several years worth of of listening so i'm sure that there were more out there but these are the ones that really really resonate with me as a child and i think are just like such amazing iconic little stories um so if you have kids and you're looking for something for them to be able to read or listen to new bedtime stories i'd 100 percent recommend any of these i think they're absolutely amazing some of them big name classics some of them absolutely unsung little gems and uh, a subscriber was asking about this so i thought i'd let you know um, I do have another video about audiobooks coming out fairly soon, so do keep an eye out for that. And that's more contemporary audiobooks I've listened to recently that I've also really enjoyed. Have a wonderful reading week, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!